Hey guys, I'm the one you lost, and in this video I'm going to show you how I drew this artwork of Mume from Hololive. So, we're starting with the head. Again, kind of the basic same head I've always been doing, the three quarters view that just works every time for me. Um, in this particular artwork, the reference I had didn't have hands because I think it might have been AI, but I thought eh, I could do it better. <laughs> so... Here I am kind of planning everything out, just the body type. Usually I draw guides, but I didn't this time. And that was probably a bad idea because the breasts don't really make that much sense in this artwork. And I should have noticed that way sooner than I did. I shouldn't have posted it without really looking and making sure. But my goal is to kind of have this uh, emerging from a jacket type look. Just something like kind of cute. I really enjoy uh, making cute artworks. But that kind of tinge on the sex appeal in a way. So right now I'm just kind of drawing it in, planning it all out, making sure it looks correct. And again, I, I messed up on the, um, on the uh, breast and I really wish I didn't do that, but it happens every now and then you make a mistake and you have to just live with it. So here I've been doing some, uh, a different kind of eye, but I felt like maybe the eyes this time weren't, that spectacular, but I'll fix it next time. No big deal. So a big thing I like to point out with the guys I do for the face is the eyes are always an eye length apart from each other. That can be broken to an extent when it comes to drawing characters, but um, for the most part, anime is simplified realism, and in realism, the human head, the eyes are placed in the middle of the face, and the eyes are exactly an eye length apart from each other. They also stop right where the flat part of the head meets. So that should help you figure out what you're doing when you're making guides. Now, the hair, uh, whenever I did the sketch, was a little too big to the point where I kind of just overdid it. And I fixed it during the, um, the line art. So that was something that um, I'm happy I managed to fix. It's kind of weird. This uh, hairstyle with Mume makes her look kind of like... Uh... Oh, no. I, I can't remember the name. It's going to make me lose my mind. It's the girl who's... Name starts with a U from My Hero Academia. It's kind of the main love interest. It kind of reminds me of her. If, uh, I mean, maybe. It's a little bit different, but not, not much. So now we're starting to plan everything out, get everything going. I'm super uh, proud of this one, even with its mistakes. I still think it turned out pretty good. Um, actually, this would be a good time for me to, uh, to, to inform you on something. We may not, as artists, like AI, but there are some particular things that you can get inspiration from when it comes to AI. It is okay to do the same pose as long as you make it your own unique thing. And as long as you're actually drawing it and not just copying it, you are already doing more than the person who made the AI artwork do. Um, I personally don't think it's taboo to take reference from AI as long as you are smart enough to know the mistakes the AI made and try fixing it yourself. Human mistakes are so much better than machine mistakes, if that makes sense. So don't let people get mad at you if you take AI as inspiration because you can learn something from AI. It's okay. I mean, heck, like AI technically was trained off of some of the best artists on Danburu and uh, Pixiv. And even though they didn't consent to it, and which really does suck, um, it, it does mean that you can learn something from it. So if you are trying to learn something from it, pass it by any art friends you might have to kind of be like, hey, am I, am I taking too much inspiration or am I doing this wrong? And a human will always be able to help you and guide you to make it more your own. There's, a, there's an old adage that's like, uh, steal like an artist. Which is basically, as long as you can take inspiration and repurpose it into something that's your own, it's fair game. Now, that may seem like, a, like something that's uh, hard to do. I, for example, if you look at my tutorials, I have one where I talk about when I reference too much. And that can definitely happen. You, you start to draw the same thing that you see, and then you uh, forget to make it your own. And over time, by learning from these artworks, you can start to develop your own style. So my recommendation would be, if you're going to learn from AI, 
at least learn from actual artists at the same time and also study real life. Simplification is just some that. It's simplification of real life. So whenever your art teacher tells you to draw realism, he's not being mean or she. They, they are trying to help you understand art. And understanding art is about taking inspiration from real life and learning to adapt what you see to paper or to a screen. So now we're doing the line art, and I'm having a whole lot of fun doing that. I, I definitely had a lot of fun with the accessories on this artwork. Um, uh, I think I did really good on the clothes this time, too. I've actually learned um, a lot about drawing clothes because I started doing some studies. And what I've found is that the less you detail you have in the line art and the more you have in the rendering, the better. So, and it, it goes against everything I stand for as an artist to not draw line art because I love line art so much. But at the end of the day, I have found that everything in terms of clothes needs to be applied through rendering and not through line art. And... That has been a hard truth I've had to deal with so far. You can see I'm starting to uh, change the eyes a bit. And this is where I think I went wrong. I think the original eyes that I had before the line art were much better. And that's my mistake. It happens sometimes. So I actually have uh, another video planned as well. I have quite a few artworks I've made in advance and I've recorded, so I can't wait to show you guys. There's going to be a particular um, video I'm making right now that's going to be what we can learn about color from AI. And the goal is not to make something with AI, but to figure out some of the more unique things AI has figured out how to do because of people's prompts and how we can apply that to our own artwork and make something unique, but also be the ones who actually made it. And I think that's a that's an interesting idea, and whether or not it's a failure or success, we'll find out. Um, like I said, I do think there's some things we can learn from AI, even if we don't like it. I kind of had to fix the hair a bit on this uh, particular artwork because, again, look how look how oversized it is <laughs> to the point where being kind of ridiculous. I had to use the liquify tool to fix things a bunch on this artwork. So there we go, we're getting the eyebrows in, making it look nice. Now we're gonna add the base colors. Yeah, in terms of uh, colors, I went a little bit softer this time. I wanted kind of a, um, what's it, like a, like a pastel, very soft look to it. And I think I did okay with that. Getting all the details in. Okay, so my fill tool, some people have told me, uh, well, I think just one person has told me they don't know how I get the colors in. And some of it's the anti-aliasing. Um, and the fact that how clean the lines are tends to help out a lot. But even then, sometimes I still have to um, go in and manually add the colors back. So you'll see that I'm using the selection pen a lot on this artwork. And that's important because it helps us get nice round gradients on things like the breast and the arm. So yeah, it kind of adds some dimension to it, makes it look really, really nice. So the skin was actually pretty quick to do this time. I just kind of blended the shapes in and then used the eraser tool to uh, airbrush erase some areas of it. But what we're coming up on now is the um, is the rendering for the top, which I think I did probably my favorite in terms of rendering. Um, I'm starting to figure out clothes uh, using multiply layers and a gradient on the clothes itself kind of adds more dimension and looks really nice. Yeah, I just wish I had done the uh, top and the breast correctly, then it wouldn't look so awkward like it's like her breasts are just extending in a weird way. <laughs> I know not everyone will see it, but I definitely do and it drives me absolutely bonkers. Now here we'll see a big mistake I made. I zoomed out way too far to do this part, and that's mainly due to uh, me trying to like flick my wrist to uh, add some, um, erase the color and kind of make a gradient out of the jacket, but I shouldn't have done that. Now we have uh, the highlights in the hair, which are hand-drawn because I prefer to draw them by hand. Just a personal preference of mine. 
And here pretty soon we're going to start doing some post-processing. Yeah, add the add glow to get that shiny look that I always have. A tonal curve, some color balance, and some level correction. Now I'm going to add kind of a... So I ended up actually changing this later, but for a while I was going to try to add feathers and or um, a black border. But I ended up not liking it. I just liked it the way it was beforehand. So yeah, now we have... Um... Things that I deleted later. <laughs> I tried playing around with it to get it to work, but it just felt distracting to me when I wanted the character to be the focus. So just adjusting things. Now I add a hard light layer to make it glow a bit more. But like I said, I ended up getting rid of all that later and just deciding to go with a regular white background and do some editing. Change the composition to be a bit more intense. And there we go. All right. If you like this video, like, comment, subscribe, hit the bell. Helps out a whole lot. And I'll see you guys next time. Bye.